Welcome back, guys, to the GSNC Hoops and Heels and One Sports podcast brought to you by the GSNC Sports Network. We just got done talking about the new team in the WNBA moving outside of the U.S. to Canada. We're now going to switch over to the MMA. We're going to talk about MMA safety rules under fire after a fight incident. This is really juicy gossip, and I do have a lot of opinions to give about this matter. Before we begin that discussion, I did want to remind you guys to like and follow the show and to become a part of our show to tip and donate using the link gsncpodcast.net. This also puts your questions and comments at the top of the list so that I see them and they get read on the air. So use the link gsncpodcast.net. And of course, we do really appreciate the support, guys. It does make a huge difference. Okay, so we're going to get started to talking about the W the women's MMA, not WNBA, the MMA. Okay. So Tamara's Vidal's technical knockout loss to Melissa Gatto at UFC Fight Night 241, which occurred as a, as a result of a punch to the breast, has sparked a debate in women's MMA. Tynera Lisboa, who was part of the UFC Fight Pass Brazil commentary team for the event, noted that the rules are the same for men and women, which means there is no foul for blows to the breast. However, Lisboa pointed out that such strikes could cause the appearance of nodules, which lead to breast cancer supposedly. We'll get more into that. That has been a debate among medical experts. The need for debate gained even more traction after reporter Evelyn Rodriguez post fight with Melissa Gatto. Gatto said, studying for the fight, I noticed that she felt she, um, talking about Videl, that she felt a lot of pain with punches to the breast in some previous fights. So I made a point of asking the referee when he came to my locker room before the fight, if I hit the area, it would be a foul. And he made it clear that it would not be an illegal strike. The referee himself would clarify that if I hit her and she asked to stop, that I should continue fighting. He himself said only when I said, he himself said only when I said so. And that's exactly what I did. Liz Boyle's remarks in Gatto's interview sparked further debate on the topic after UFC Fight Night 241. IMMAF referee, refereeing director Guillermo Bravo made a point to emphasize that Gatto played by the rules. Bravo said, Melissa was intelligent, she studied the rules, noticed her opponent's weak point, and worked on it. The issue here was not to blame the athlete, but to raise a necessary debate for the evolution of the sport, which today is played by men and women, but the rules are made only by men. Carlo Bar- Barreto, the main commentator for the UFC Fight Pass Brazil, agreed with Bravo. Barreto said, I sent a mention- message to Claudia Gadelha, who is now a UFC employee as soon as the broadcast ended. Women need to come together to do something. It may not necessarily be changing the rules, but at least creating a official outfit for girls with a mandatory protective bustier. I don't know how to say that word, bustier. I literally don't know how to say that word. But I think protective uh, breast area we'll go with. UFC is not redesigning gloves to evolve the sport. It would be the same path towards protecting women, especially if there are already studies proving the link between blows to the breast and breast cancer. Again, the Bravo also pointed out that the Association of Boxing Commissions will have a large meeting this year to define the down fighter rule, and this would be an excellent opportunity to discuss the issue as well. And Bravo said, debate is always important for the evolution of the sport. I think the girls could take advantage of this important ABC vote this year to bring this issue to debate. This is serious stuff. Okay, look, we are all aware of the dangers of competing in the MMA. Concussions are common in the MMA due to strikes in the head. For instance, we have heard the story of Tim Hogg, who was the former UFC fighter who switched to boxing and unfortunately passed away in 2017 after suffering a brain, a brain hemorrhage following a knockout loss. And then also there have been a lot of neck injuries potentially leading to being paralyzed or other learned to- long-time disabilities, like when Jared Platt suffered a neck injury during practice that left him paralyzed from the neck down. More specifically about hitting to the breast though, Strikes to the breast can obviously cause significant pain and bruising. A hematoma in the breast is a collection of blood inside the breast tissue, which can occur after a traumatic injury to the area. It obviously would be painful and may even require surgical intervention if it does not resolve on its own. Then there is a risk of fat necrosis, a condition where fatty tissue in the breast dies due to trauma. This can lead to painful lumps, which can sometimes be mistaken for more serious conditions like breast cancer. And then, of course, breast cancer. Now, this is a debated um, issue in the medical community about whether trauma to the breast increases the risk of breast cancer. But still, just like the thought of that is important to show that it is dangerous to cause severe trauma to that part of the body. 
Here are the current fouls as to where you can and can't hit, um, etc. It's, um, here we go. Sorry. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, someone also just wrote that it's tough to watch any MMA men's or women's. You know, honestly, some of them are very tough to watch. It can get very aggressive, and this just goes into how there does need to be more strict guidelines, and we will get into that soon. So right here are the official fouls. What is considered a foul? What is illegal in the sport? What you can't do? You can't butt with the head, eye gouge, fire a spit, fish hook, which is where you use your fingers in a manner that attacks your opponent's mouth, nose, or ears to stretch the skin. Hair pulling, pile driver, which is any throw where you can't control your opponent's body, placing their feet up in the air with their head straight down and then forcibly drives the opponent's head into the canvas or flooring material. Strikes to the spine or the back of the head, throat strikes, fingers outstretched toward an opponent's face and eyes, downward pointing elbow strike, groin attacks of any kind, kneeling and kicking the head, stomping on the opponent, holding opponent's gloves or shorts, small joint manipulations like, you know, um, manipulating like joints, um, knuckles, I meant, like <laughs> obviously they're joints, <laughs> like knuckles or like tiny parts of your fingers. Placing your finger into an open cut or body cavity, which sounds so disgusting. Throw an opponent out of the ring or cage. Clawing or pinching the skin. Timidity or slash faking an injury. Use of abusive language. Flagrant disregard of the ref's instructions. Unsportsmanlike conduct. And attacking the opponent after the fight is over. Okay, so that is basically the main types of fouls. There's a lot, and they all go into so much detail. I really respect that they have these very firm, detailed fouls. But on here, there is no mention of hitting in the breast. It actually shocks me that that is not even mentioned at all. I feel like that is a known fact that that area is particularly sensitive on a woman's body and not just for certain women, like for every woman, it is particularly sensitive. Now, I'm not attacking Gatto, saying that she was in the wrong or that she did something wrong because she hit her opponent in the breast area. When you think of the competition, Gatto was smart. She saw her opponent's weakness and went for it. Now, that this has happened, I think there needs to be more guidelines on hitting this area of the body, Every female is sensitive to that area. It isn't fair for your opponent to hit you there. Like in the same way you can't hit someone in the eye to blind them. It's purely an unfair advantage and it's not making the sport, the sport fun at all. Also, athletes with fewer injuries can compete for longer and reducing the frequency and severity of injuries can significantly lower healthcare costs associated with sports injuries, benefiting both athletes and the organization. Along with this is the fact that fans want to see their favorite athletes compete regularly and at their best, not sidelined by injuries or unfair uh, strikes. Safer sports can maintain high levels of competition and entertainment. There definitely needs to be a debate about this and how to go about stricter rules on where you can and can't hit. Women are required to wear chest protectors, but maybe this news is a sign that there needs to be more protection on the chest, maybe a better design or build of how a chest protector is right now. I do think that this issue stems from the idea that these rules were made from, by men, and that's not, I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, um, but it's just, it's a thing. Like, that's just how it was made by men. So, of course, there isn't really a mention of hitting in the breast area and making that a foul. Um, I do think that there needs to be a serious talk about this though, and my idea of how stricter guidelines could be created going something like this. First, you need to talk to current and former MMA fighters, gather their perspectives and experiences, and then also speak to medical professionals who can educate you on why hits in certain areas are dangerous and can cause other health issues. And then afterwards, like we should or you should campaign and advocate to the governing bodies of the MMA and those that sort of run the league define what you're advocating for, which is the overall safety of MMA fighters and their health, and include specific prohibitions on strikes in certain areas, mandatory protective gear, or more stringent penalties for violations. So this is a really serious issue when you think about it. It when I think when you think about it, no, it just is a serious issue. Um, I mean. We want to take care of something like this before it becomes too late, before this is becomes a huge issue where now all opponents are attacking each other in the breast area because they know that's a sensitive area for every female. It's, it's just not fair. It's not a game anymore. It's not a competition. It's just, it's just brutal. And I think there needs to be a lot firmer guidelines on that. I mean, if I was watching that, I'd be like, oh, that wasn't, that wasn't a fair call. I feel like that person didn't truly 
win, I guess. And I'm not taking a strike against Ga a strike. I'm not taking a gadge against um, Gato saying that she was in the wrong because, you know, at the end of the day, she was a smart competitor. She fought her opponent smart. Like, she did the intelligent thing, found a weakness, and went for it. That's what you do in the MMA. That was a smart move. But I think there needs to be more guidelines addressing this because it is a serious issue when you think about it that this could stir a, a lot of a lot of injuries for fighters. And we don't want to see people continue to be taken out of the sport. Anyway, we are now going to move on to the next segment where we talk about the House v. NCAA settlement and its effect on women's sports. There's a lot to dive into on that. Before we begin, um, we are going to be taking a short break, so I will see you guys very soon. <laughs> 